الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعوا بالإسلام مدين ما درس بسم براتز وسيسز مدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, welcome to the North Brixton Islamic Cultural Center. Today we resume our weekly sessions. And be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I believe with the consent of the Sheikh, there will be um, some kind of dimension to our weekly sessions this year, inshallah. Um, as you've seen flyers being sent around, what we're doing now, inshallah, every topic of the week, you will be pre-informed. And then we send the flyers, so at least if you want to research, you want to do something on it, or about it, or you res whatever research, then you will able to know exactly what we're going to talk about, and you may have questions beforehand to ask. And um, one of the topics, as you've seen, Sheikh will be talking what brings tranquility, people are stressed in this country everywhere, and what is the Islamic solutions to that. Um, with now, as usual, I will recite verses from the Quran and explain the nutshell meaning of these verses, or verse, and thereafter I will pass the mic to my able Sheikh, a Sheikh a Dr. Faisal Bouadi, to elaborate and um, bring us to whatever we will learn from these verses in connection to our daily life. If you have the Quran, it's Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, and the verse is verse 177. <laughs> ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال على حبه وآت المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب وأقام الصلاة وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والموفون بعهدهم إذا عاهدوا والصامرين في الباساء والضراء وحين الباس أولئك الذين صدقوا أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون الله سيس in the name of Allah the most great, the most gracious and the most merciful he said, Laysa al-Bir. He said, Righteousness is not unto wallu wujuhakum qibal al mashariq. It's not for you to turn your faces towards the east, wal maghrib, and the west. This is not righteousness. Walakin al-Bir. But righteousness is man amana billah. It is he who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief in Allah. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And to have faith or belief, or believe in the day of judgment, resurrection, that when you die, you will be resurrected. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ 
wal malaika and to believe that the angels they exist even though you have not seen them you must believe in them wal kitab and to believe in the book the holy quran and all the previous books that were revealed before the book of the quran before the quran you have to believe in the torah the injil and etc and also to believe in the messengers, the prophets that Allah has sent out to the last one Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to spend your substance or your wealth your provision to spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please Allah, Allah hubbi, to please Allah. Though will qurba wal yatama. You spend it to your kin. Those who are very close to you in relation, family, bond. Wal yatama and the orphans. And also as well, wal masakin. And spend it to those who are poor, the needy, sabil, and for the one who is in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the traveler, the musafir, the traveler, the one who is in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a traveler. You spend your world to look after them when they are in need. And Allah said, and for those who ask when they are in need, they ask, help them. That's righteousness. And for the slaves, those who are slaves, you free them if you can. And Sheikh will relate that as well to those, for example, he's in prison and etc. And thereafter, you establish your five daily prayers. Out of faith, you establish your five daily prayers. And you give zakah. And Allah said, And the righteousness is to fulfill your promises when you promise. And for those people who are very patient. In times of pain or suffering and adversity, adversity as well, when they're going through adversity, problems. Allah said, These categories of people or righteousness Allah have mentioned, He said, Whoever implement them, those are the ones who are truthful and God fearing to Allah. And He said, And those are the ones. Who truly fear or conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us be amongst them, Ya Kareem. My dear brothers and sisters in the deen, as I have just narrated the nutshell meaning of this ayah I have recited to you, without much ado, I will pass the mic to the Abu Sheikh to dwell into it one by one, inshallah. Faliyatafadr Sheikh, mashkura. Okay, now the topic, Sheikh said, did you read the topic to them? And I believe some of you um, received the flyers, right? Okay. Now, we're talking about stress, anxiety in Islam. We are looking at the, you know, Islamic perspective. Now, people are stressed for some reasons. You're going through anxiety for some reasons. And as I mentioned to you, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier on, that we'll be having sometimes workshop to discuss as well and etc. The Sheikh will explain to you how it's going to be, inshallah. But we want to find solutions to these problems. Because we have the book, we have the Quran. And the Quran is a solution to all our problems. There is no problem in the world that the Quran does not tackle. 
So the Sheikh said, we must inform you as well, remind you of the topic. And that is stress and anxiety. The causes and also as well the Islamic solution. So this is the topic by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Tabadda Sheikh Bashkura. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, alhamdulillah, you are still alive after this time. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity. But brothers and sisters, you are talking about something known as stress. And what? Anxieties and so on and so forth. First of all, you have to know what is stress. You must know the definition of it. And then you must know and what different kinds of stress that you have. And you must know also what are the causes of the anxieties. All these different kinds and so forth. What are the causes of each one of them? And the last but not the least, what will be the solutions to this stress? that people have, isn't it? Good. But mashallah, I don't think anybody has a stress here. <laughs> I love that. Because you know why? If you have a stress, you have to stretch. The moment you stretch, you have no problem. <laughs> the stress goes. Yeah. Now, you go to the last part, you see, we should always, we should not be like a shaitan, you speak. We must look for Allah and remember Allah and seek His help and obedience to Him at any time. Not like shaitan. When shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to prostrate before Adam alayhi salam. What did he say? What shaitan said? He said no. Why? He said, Ana khayru min. I am better than him, isn't it? Good. That means he's having this kind of marcia. But with takabur. He's having this kind of disobedience, this kind of a sin, with pride and arrogance. So by that time, he didn't want to listen to Allah. Isn't it? Good. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, if that is the case, I'm going to take you out from this, where? From this Jannah. I'm taking you out. And my curse is going to be with you until when? Until? Day of judgment. Okay, that's it. What did Shaitan do after that? He asked Allah for respite. Now he went to Allah. When? When he was in stress. He couldn't have anything and so forth. Now he knows Allah. Now he knows Allah. He is going to Allah. Oh Allah, please. Can you give me what? Anzurini ila yomi. So, the time that he was having all kinds and so on and so forth, he does indeed Allah. But when he was in stress, so forth, that is the time he knows Allah. He went to Allah, oh Allah, please, can you give me respite and so on and so forth. This is the nature of some of us. We only know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are in trouble. When you are in trouble, oh please Allah, please help me. Oh Allah, please, I'm in trouble. If you don't help me, I can understand. Oh look, yeah, these people, they are coming to take my word. All my things are out. You have to simple. No. <coughs> Subhanallah. That's it. You cut all the tongues, mashallah. Some of them, mashallah. Taki taki tongues, they are talking about all that tongues. Salam alaikum for salat now. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, we're going to have a very excited moment, Bayyidin Allah Taala. 
as we've just got reference about shaitan when he's stressed that's when he turns to Allah to ask for respite but never mind we will have um, a short break now for Salat, Salat al-Maghrib and uh, after that we come immediately to handle or tackle this in the Ta'ala Jazakumullah wa nakhir jazak Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'a bi lisan al my dear respectable brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, Welcome back we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our salah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and those people who are sick amongst us amongst the Muslim Ummah wherever they are may Allah cure them May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their sicknesses become expiation of sins and grants all of them and all of us Al Jannah May Allah forgive Allah the Sako, Sheikh Salah and all those brothers and sisters who have gone to the world beyond. Um, my dear respectable brothers and sisters, before break, the break for Salah, um, we just, I mean the Sheikh was talking about the topic as an introduction into it. Um, the topic is stress and anxiety, its causes and solution in Islam. We're looking at the Islamic perspective when it comes to stress and anxiety. And I believe we are living in a world where most of us are suffering from that. In Africa, Sheikh always say it, and some of us will always say it. And some places where people are poor, they have one meal a day, but they are happy. They are not as stressed like those who have millions, pounds, thousands of pounds and dollars. But yet some of us, we have cars, the account is full, mashallah, you have big house, you sleep in air condition, whatever. But you are suffering from stress and anxiety all the time. You are not happy. Why and what is the solution? So therefore, the Sheikh asks us to recite Surah Baqarah, chapter verse um, 177. And I narrated the nutshell meaning of this ayah. And where the Sheikh stopped before we went for Salah, he said some of us should not be sorry he said first of all what we need to know we need to look at the definition of stress what do we mean or understand by the, the word stress what do we mean by the word stress using the word stress what do you mean what's the definition and then he said we have to know as well the kinds of stress there are different types of kind or kind of test um, stress and also as well he said we need to look at the causes and the solutions. Bismillah ta'ala. So without much ado, I'll pass the mic to the Abu Sheikh for him to continue for the Tafadl Sheikh. Mashkura. Mashallah barakallahu feek. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah salatu wa salam ala ashraf wa salam ala Muhammad wa ala 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 Well, as you were talking about what uh, regards what the people used to do, that when he believes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to do something he did not want to do it he didn't want to do it but when he was in need of his own sins and so forth he went to who? to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was so arrogant and pompous for what he has done he did not regret. But what about Adam alayhi salam? Huh? Yes. He recognized and acknowledged his sins, what he has done and so forth. And said, Oh Allah, if I repent, can I come back here again? He said yes. So what did he say? Rabbana, Zalamna Amfusana wa illam Tafirlana wa tarhamna Nakunana bina Subhanallah khaslin Subhanallah So he acknowledged Then Allah said okay Since you have done that no problem But what, did, what was the sin Adam alayhi salam committed Comparing to that of Iblis What sin did Adam Comment. He ate for the tree. He ate? He ate the tree. Okay. What do you want to say? Alright, the fruit. No, 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 no. 
Okay? So you have what is called take something from the what? From the tree. Okay. What did he do? Did he uprooted the tree? No. Huh? What did he do? How many? One. Only one? And it has to be taken out from the heaven? And what up? How many trees that you have forbidden that you have been eating? Hmm? How many of them? How many fruits that you have forbidden to eat? And you have eaten them and you are still working very proudly and so forth on the land. Just one tree. You have and the fruits. He didn't take Oh, he didn't go up and put all the trees on the floor, on top and then bring them on floor and they start eating everything. Took only one. He did not uproot the tree. And yet still, he was punished by taking him out of Subhanallah. But at the end, he said, I have wronged myself, Allah. He did not put blame upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth, isn't it? No. But it's how you are. You say you have stress, you have this, you have that, and so on and so forth. What kind of stress referring to other prophets and so forth that we have more than what they had? What kind of stress that we have more than those prophets? Who were for us? When you go to Quran chapter 38, from verse 41, 45 to 54, let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said regarding Ayyub alayhi salam. Chapter 38, Surah to Saad, verse 41. So 54. Look at Surah Sad, chapter 38. So we're going to look at Ayub's stress. The stress, torment, and trial he went through. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واذكر عبدنا أيوب إذ نادى ربه أني مسني الشيطان أني مسني الشيطان بنصب وعذاب أركض برجلك هذا مغتسل بارد وشراب ووهبنا له أهله ومثلهم معه وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَذِكْرَى وَذِكْرَى لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ وَخُذْ بِيَدِكَ دِغْثًا فَضُرِبْ بِهِ وَلَا تَحْنَثْ إِنَّا وَجَدْنَاهُ صَابِرًا نِعْمًا إنا وجدناه صابرا نعم العبد إنه أواب واذكر عبدنا إبراهيم وإسحاق ويعقوب أولي الأيد والأبصار إنا أخلصناهم بخالصة ذكر الدار وإنهم عندنا لمن المصطفين الأخيار وَذَكَرَ إِسْمَاعِيلَ وَالْيَسَعَ وَذَا الْكِفْلِ وَكُلٌّ مِنَ الْأَخْيَارِ هَذَا ذِكْرٌ وَإِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لَحُسْنُ مَآبٍ هَذَا ذِكْرٌ وَإِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لَحُسْنُ مَآبٍ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنٍ مُفَتَّحَةً لَهُمْ لَأَبْوَابٌ مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا يَدْعُونَ فِيهَا يدعون فيها بفاكهة كثيرة وشراب الأسيس واذكر عبدنا أيوب 
Uh, that's Psalm 52, yeah? وَعِنْدَهُمْ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِ أَتْرَابَ هَذَا مَا تُوَعَدُونَ لِيَوْمِ الْحِسَابَ إِنَّ هَذَا لَرِزْقًا لَرِزْقُنَا مَا لَهُ مِنْ نَفَادَ Allah said, وَذْكُرْ عَبْدَنَا أَيُّبْ And remember our servants, Allah's servants, Job in English, Prophet Ayyub. إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ Remember when he cried to his Lord during the difficulties he was going through, the stress, the pain. He cried out to his Lord and said, O Allah, أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانِ بِنُسْبٍ وَعَذَابٍ Look. He said, Allah, Satan has afflicted me with distress, stress, and suffering. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Urkud berijlik, as a response to his request. He said, Ayyub, Job, he says, strike with your foot. Hatha mughtasalun baridun wa sharab. When you strike your foot, water will gush out from the earth and use that water to wash yourself it's cool and refreshing and then you drink from the same water Allah said when he cried out I gave him that Allah said and I gave him back his family that he lost and I doubled the number of children that he had before distress or distress that he went through Allah said is a mercy from me Allah to him but this is not just only for Ayyub Allah said it's a reminder remembrance admonition for myself and you for the people of understanding those who have understanding may Allah make us be amongst them and Allah SWT said he said, وَخُذْ بِيَدِكَ دِغْثًا فَدْرِبْ بِهِ وَلَا تَحْنَثْ He said, and take in your hand a little grass and strike that one therewith. Okay? Allah said, in, so, and then he said, um, do not break your oath. Don't break your oath. And he said, إِنَّ وَجَدْنَاهُ صَوَبِرًا Allah said, Ayyub was a very patient servant. He was a very patient servant. Ni'mal abd. Imagine the God who created the servants. He is praising his servants. He said about Ayyub. He said, Ni'mal abd. He said, what an excellent, excellent servant Ayyub was. He said, innahu awwab. Why? Because Ayyub always turned to Allah in repentance. Subhanallah. And he said, وَذْكُرْ عَبْدَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَيَعْقُوبُ أُولِ الْأَيْدِ وَالْأَبْصَارِ He said, and remember as well, commemorate this, our servants, Allah's servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, those are the possessors of power and vision. إِنَّا أَخْلَصْنَاهُمْ بِخَالِصَةٍ ذِكْرَ الدَّارِ Allah said, Verily, we did choose them for a special purpose, the remembrance of the hereafter. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues saying, وَإِنَّهُمْ عِنْدَنَا لَمِنَ الْمُسْتَفَيْنِ الْأَخْيَارِ Allah said, So we, they were truly in my sight. And they are the companions of elect and the good. Subhanallah. Wadhkur Ismail. And remember Prophet Ismail. Alayhi salam. Wal yasa'a. And yasa'a. That is Elisha, is he? Elisha. You call it Elisha, isn't it? Elisha. Elisha. Beautiful. Al yasa'a. Yeah? Elisha. Good. <laughs> and then the Kifl. How do you call the Kifl in English? You don't have a name for him. Uh, okay. 
That's good. Anyway, all these are prophets. Allah said, وَكُلُّ مِنَ الْأَخْيَارِ They are all amongst who? The righteous ones, the good ones to Allah. Subhanallah. And he said, هَذَا ذِكْرِ This is an admonition, the remembrance. وَإِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لَحُسْنَ مَآبَ Allah said, Verily, for those who are righteous, they have a beautiful place of abode at the final points of return. May Allah make us be amongst them. Amen. What do they have? Allah said, Jannati adni mufattahatan lahumul abwaab. They will have gardens of eternity. May Allah make us be amongst the dwellers of these gardens. And not only does, Allah said, whose doors will ever be open to them? Muttaki'ina fiha. They will recline, relax in Al Jannah. Yadu'una fiha. And they will be calling, requesting at pleasure. Bifakiha. For fruits. Kathira in abundance. Wa sharab. And they have delicious drink. Allah said, Wa indahuma qasiratu tarf. Aturab. And besides them, by the side, beside them, at, at, uh, beside them, by their side, they will have women that are chaste, restraining from all faults. May Allah make us have them. Allah said, Hada ma He said, This is what you've been promised if you are righteous. Liyomi al hisab. In the day of accountability or the day of accounts. In Hadha Larisquna. Allah said, Truly, this is our own bounty. That's that will never come to an end or fail. It will surely prevail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the dwellers. This is This is the man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned. But before you go to the other one, go to Surah 28, uh, uh, 21, Surah Al Anbiya. Go to Surah Anbiya 21, from verse 83, verse 83 to 84. Surah 21, Anbiya. Yeah, from verse 82 to 84, inshallah. Wali Sulaiman Auri. وَلِسُلَيْمَانَ الرِّيحَ عَاسِفَةً تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا وَكُنَّا بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَالِمِينَ وَمِنَ الشَّيَاطِينَ مَنْ يَغُوصُونَ لَهُ وَيَعْمَلُونَ عَمَلًا دُونَ ذَلِكَ وَكُنَّا لَهُمْ حَافِظِينَ وَأَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الدُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ضُرُّ وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَمِثْلَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَذِكْرَى لِلْعَابِدِينَ Just 24. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What is Sulaiman? He said, And to Solomon, King Solomon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the power to control the violence wind or the wind the breeze he controls it subhanallah hey. Allah said 
He put it in his own order to the land which Allah SWT has blessed. وَكُلَّ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَالِمِينَ Allah said, He do know all things, everything that happens. وَمِنَ الشَّيَاطِينَ And amongst the power Allah gave to Solomon, He used to control the jinn, all of them. He put them under His own subject, submission. Allah gave him the power. And he said, من يغوصون له ويعملون عملا دون ذلك He said, some of these jinns, they used to dive. They go in the sea, dive, bring minerals, everything. Just for Suleiman. And some of them, they do other jobs besides this. But he delegates. And tell them, you do this, you do that. And they listen to him, they are all scared of him. This human being, one man controlling the whole gene kingdom. Allah said, "Thalika, yeah, we do need thalik." Wa kunna lahum hafidin. Allah said, "It is me, Allah, that guided them." What are you? And remember, Job, are you? If nada Rabbah. When he was going through his stress, he cried out to Allah and said, Oh Allah, Anni masani adur. Said Allah, truly distress, stress, afflictions has seized me. Wa anta arhamur rahimin. He said, Oh Allah, you are the most merciful and the most gracious. You are the most merciful of all those who are merciful. Allah said, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهِ And I answered to his count. I answered to his cry. فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ دُرْ He said, and I removed all the stress he was going through. <laughs> Listen, stress. He said, I removed all the stress he was going through. And what did I do? He said, وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا He said, and then I compensated him. I gave him all what he lost. His wealth, family, children, all that he lost. He said, I gave it back to him. But I doubled it. I did not just give him. I doubled whatever he had before the stress. I gave it to him and I doubled it after stress, the stress. He said, this is a mercy from me, Allah. وَذِكْرَ لِلْعَابِدِينَ This is what I love. Allah said, it's not just a mercy from me to Ayyub, but this is a lesson for everyone who worship Allah. As long as you are a servant, you worship Allah, He said, this is a reminder, a lesson for you to take on board. Subhanallah, you are telling me here, this is the man who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this kind of trial. He lost all his possessions. All his children died. Imagine. All his children, all of them died. He lost his home. The properties that he had, the farm, the sheep, all of them, they died. Until he was even losing balance, even of the mind. And he became very lonely. All his friends, wife and so forth, everybody started to go from him. Why? Because they said, oh, Israel and the worms coming from his body and whenever you want to take someone wants to take it from there he said no that is their food leave them let them eat so, you tell me what stress have you gone through He lost all his possessions, his children, all of them died, imagine. 
You one child died. You want to uproot the whole world. All the ten children, they died. They died. All of them, one by one, in front of him. Looking at it. His aunt, all of them. Not one of them was left. His properties, everything was destroyed. It's gone. Nothing. And apart from that, it came to his body himself. Imagine. Maybe you can say that, well, this one I can have to support. But look at his body. He could not move, just lying down one place. And all the friends, which everybody had gone and left him. SubhanAllah. Who is the best friend? The best friend is the one who is there for you in time of what? In need. They were enjoying things that he used to have. But when this affliction came to him, they all let him. And he was alone. And he was the prophet. He was the ordinary person like me and you. He was the prophet of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. He did not give up. He was there. The worms were all over the body. But he asked Allah, Oh Allah, they can be in any part of my body, but please leave only this tongue for me. That they should not touch my tongue. Why? So that I can use that one to praise you. SubhanAllah. You don't say that, oh God, why did you do this to me, and why me, and so on and so forth. No. He didn't say that. He said, oh Allah, please, just leave that one for me. So that I can use that one to praise you, and to thank you, and to be grateful to you. SubhanAllah. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from that. But why? Because to him, this world was nothing to him. This world, it was nothing to him. The most important thing to him was, where? Dal al Akhirah. Yes. When you look at the same Surah 38, I am 46. I am 46. You have seen it? All right. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Inna akhlasnam bi khalisatin zikrata. That is it. This is the special thing Allah gave you. Well, Allah. He was all the time calling unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what you are supposed to do. But do we do that? Look at Ubayy ibn Ka'ad. Radiallahu anhu. He said, Messenger of Allah, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, sunu alayhim, wa sallimu taslima. When Allah himself sent his sin, his blessings and mercy upon Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the angels also to do the same thing. Then Allah commanded the believers that you should do what? You should send them. Asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for his blessings upon Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anh came and said messenger of Allah. How many parts of my supplications, my dua, that I have to commit that one for you. That means to make, to ask blessings for you all the time. He said, Marshid, whatever thing you want. He said, a robot, a quarter of it, the time, he said, Marshid. As you want. He said, half of the time that I use to make my own dua, should I dedicate that one for you? He said, according to how you want. We're in the term of a khair. But if you increase it, it will be better for you. If you increase, it will be better for you. Then he said, Sulusain, two thirds of my dua, that time I should dedicate that one to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you. He said, if you wish. But where is it? If you add more to it, it's better for you. Then he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah. If that is the case, if I increase, it is what for me? Better. Huh? Better. It is better for me. Well, then, say, Ajahn. Salati kullahalak. Then I'm going to make the time that I'm supposed to ask Allah for myself, anything I need, I'm going to use all the time. To ask Allah for blessings upon you. What the Prophet Allah said. He said, then if you do that, if you do that, Kufita Hamuk. It will take off all your problems. You are stressed everything that you have. Or took for the noobak. And your sins would do what? Why? Subhanallah. Look. Do you have that time? You don't have time to do this now. You don't have that. It is like in one of Arab countries, I don't want to mention the name of the place, one female rabbi of a Roman Catholic, she got sick, she was so sick, she had a big, big lump, and it's a, like a cancer. She was taken to the hospital. And when the doctors look at her condition and so forth, he said it's a very, very stressful thing for them. They have to operate. So they have to put her observations for another day in the hospital to see. But she saw one Muslim nurse. How she was dressed and so on and so forth. She was with, uh, happy with how this lady was. 
her appearance, how this would be so forth. And she said when she slept, she had a dream. And in that dream, subhanAllah, some people, Allah has blessed them. May Allah bless all of us. Amen. She was invited into Islam by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in the dream, he saw someone so bright came and gave her the Quran. And the place where she was having the sickness, he put his hand over there. And you know, those rabbis, they have cross, they have to make a, uh, this a cross sign, all of them. I don't know if they do it and this and so forth. Yeah, like a tattoo, all of them. He said he put his hand over there. And once he was there, she started, he said, Prophet Sassama told her to repeat Surah to Fatiha. And she was saying, I was saying this thing, and I said all the people, the doctors and so forth, the nurses, all of them came around her. Yes, around her bed. And she didn't know anything. They were just, because this woman reciting Surah al Fatiha. When she finished, he said he told her also Surah al Ikhlas. Just when she woke up, when she looked, everybody was around her. What's happened? She said, Muhammad came to heal me. Muhammad? Do you know him? He said, no. I know, I know nothing about this one. He said, but you were saying something. He said, yes. He told me to repeat it after him. And he told me, I will never forget it. So, what happened? Can you say it? She said yes. And she started reciting Surah to Fatima. When she finished, she started Surah to Ikhlas. And she looked at the cross sign that they used to have is gone. And the lamp that she used to have is also gone. They make another screen and everything, and everything is gone. She said on that night, eight of the doctors accepted Islam. He said the next day, this didn't reach others. Some of rabbis and so forth, they came. And why not? The God, 12 of them also accepted Islam. They accepted Islam. SubhanAllah. But the problem afterwards, the media took it. And she was arrested. She was arrested. And was put into prison. That she must do what? Come back. She said, no way. She said, no way. What I saw, and what happened to me, this one is God's intervention. I will 
never done. She was showing her body. He said they have iron heated on this side. You put it here. If you can, if you see her at this and so forth, he said all these things because of that. They put. That she must. She said no. Then she showed her hands, her arms here and there. They put again all this body. She said, no, I'm not going. Then she showed her chest here. They put it. Someone who was not born in Islam. Those of us who have born in Islam, if you are to be done, this and so forth. No, they just pinch them. Not even done. Just pinch. You yeah, will just stop. No, no, no. Uh, yes, I don't believe in that again. I don't believe in that. But she said no. So until they reach a stage that she was circled, she was beaten, she was dead, she said, look. All what you can do to me is you can kill this body. He said, but the soul, he said, it's not this body, you know, that lives. Okay? It is the soul. And that soul, when the time comes, or whatever what you want to do, you kill me, that soul goes back to whom I believe. So you are fighting a losing battle. You cannot win. A woman who has just accepted Islam, and she's going through all that, but she did not give up. She did not give up. Just to believe in Allah. Afterwards, she said, when she came out in prison, more than, she said one day, more than 100 people accepting Islam. He said, I did not tell them to accept Islam. No. So she said she put on her hijab, dress up bit, and said that country, the girls, the ladies who were wearing all this type of thing, he said, when they came, they saw her, they started to cry. All of them changed. He said, in one week, he asked about 800 people who had accepted Islam. Allah Akbar. But she said, I did not speak to anybody. I'd not tell anyone to become a Muslim. But these people just, they just come and listen to my story. They said, no, this is the true way of life. <coughs> and we have it. But we don't. Our Iman is so shaky. Our Iman is very, very shaky. How are we going to get ourselves put it up? So, this is the woman who had accepted Islam, and this was what was done to her. And yet, still, she did not give up. She didn't give up. Why? She said, You can. Spoil all this body and how you want it. He said, but the soul, that one, you can never. You can never. Well, we, that's why when we pray to Allah, our du'as are not being answered. Why? 
because we are concerned more about our body, not of the soul. We are more concerned of the here of this world, dunya, not al akhirah. Not al akhirah. And that's the problem you are facing. How can our supplications, our du'as, would be answered by Allah? And Allah said, I did not make two hearts, two hearts in your heart, in your body. How many did everybody has? One. So it is not possible, you have this cup, and then you take a charcoal or whatever, and you put it inside, and you think both of them can stay together. Mm, can they stay together? No. But always one has to come and overcome the other, isn't it? Yes. So we as Muslims, we must always stand. Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah has said, Bazkuruni azkurkum. Washkuruli wala takfun. Remember me in time of prosperity. When I give you this and so forth, you're happy and so forth, that is the time you have to do more. So if you do that, I will also remember you in the time of what? Distress. Adversity, distress. I will remember you then. But how many of us remember Allah when we have all kinds of things and so forth? When our bodies are very good, everything is nice and so forth, mashallah. He said, why are you not wearing hijab? He said, you know, I have to go to beauty, what? <laughs> he goes to beauty salon in order to go and do my hair, so on and so forth. And when I finish it, you know, it cost me a lot of money, you know. And when I finish, in order to cover it, why did I do it? So that I can show it. Yeah? And now you want me to cover it. But when you see that, the earth said, that is the first one, I will take it out when you come inside. I will pluck it out. <laughs> That's the first one, I will pluck it out for you. When, when you go and you see people who have died before, and their bodies and so forth, do you see any hair on it? No. Huh? Huh? Did you see it? What is it? It's gone. That's the first thing. You say you? That's the first thing I'm going to pull out from you. It's gone. You see? Some people said, oh, you see, but make wudu? Ah, no, no, no. I have made makeup. <laughs> hey, you want me to make down? No, no, that is not possible. I make makeup. Your eyes and so forth that you have and so forth. The earth said that's the next one also. I'll pluck them out. I'll take them out. When you go there, some people even put a, how do you call it? False. Uh, huh? Subhanallah. Why is that you should not return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you don't return to Allah, then our stress will be more and more and more. <laughs> All right. You finish with chapter 34, verse 8 to 10. My dear beloved, brothers, sisters, fathers, and mothers in the team. It's amazing. Um, 
for us to have this opportunity that we have now. There are people who are looking for it, but they don't have it. And some are dying of stress. They don't have anyone to console them either. Talk less of giving them a solution. Um, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this topic will be continued. We'll continue with the topic, inshallah. Probably, I don't know. It depends on how the Sheikh wants to deal with it. Inshallah. Um, the coming weeks. I will advise you and myself to get in touch with brothers and sisters whom you know. They are Muslims, they're going through stress and problems. It depends the type of problems or stress the person is going through. And if you heard from the Sheikh, what he said earlier on, he said we're going to have to define the word stress and the kinds or types of stress. They've been mentioning a few of them in the Quran. But specifically, inshallah, we get you through them next week. And then we find, we go through these solutions. Now he's giving you um, a similitude example of those prophets who are very closer to Allah than you than myself but yet they went through the most difficult test and the test they go, went through none of us will even half one percent of them trust me these are chosen prophets by Allah otherwise you will say if I'm a Muslim why would Allah test me then why those ones who are very close and they are choosing to be prophets so this is lessons to myself and you. Don't be despair. Don't lose hope. But the Quran is a solution to our problems. The Ibn Allahi Ta'ala. Um, we'll be having workshops and so many things be Ibn Allahi Ta'ala on this topic. And for brothers and sisters who don't receive the messages or even recordings of the audio that the sessions that we do you don't receive you every week please do contact me and you give me your number from now on inshallah as i said for those who are not here prior to the topic every week we send you a flyer to tell you the topic of the week and you will do your own research and you'll find whatever questions you want to ask me ask the shirt you get them prepared um we've got 10 more minutes for salah just before, yeah, just before we go, inshallah, the Sheikh, of course, has come to um, dealt with chapter 38 and verse 41, right? Okay, we'll finish that one. So, okay, so inshallah, we will resume on that next week. And then inshallah, you will know all these things. And probably, or most likely, we're going to hear from you to know what do you understand by stress and if you are stressed did you stretch and if you stretched did he go if he didn't go then tell me the problem and that time inshallah we have Sheikh Musa who is in our Jama and now he's <laughs> he's going to say something just few words inshallah very one or two minutes and then inshallah we come to the end why they said he's stress he's not stress <laughs> look at them they love Sheikh Musa so much they said he's stress they want to share his stress he's not stress because he stretched before he came here Alhamdulillah <laughs> wa salatu wa salam ala asari wa salim nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salam May Allah, may Allah bless our humble Sheikh and continue to prolong his days, weeks and years with us to benefit from him and may Allah reward him abundantly. And those who are here coming to listen to the lectures, may Allah take care of our problems and also our distress and stress and whatever kind of uh, problems that we have, may Allah take care of those problems. As a believing man and a woman, if we are in doubt of anything or we are going through difficulty, this is now the manual that has been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the knowledge, they are now 
showing us the cure to the problems that we are uh, from from the problems that we are uh, envisaging, uh, envisaging every week, days, a month, or every year. So I ask the brothers and sisters from what we've learned today from these um, chapters that have been chosen by the Sheikh, it's enough for us to know that these are very important people, important personalities. If Allah can try them, it's not you, an ordinary person, that Allah will not try. And you will not say you believe in Allah SWT without Allah trying you. For you to, your faith or your believing to be proven by Allah SWT, Allah must test you and see how steadfast you will be. Because you must show some kind of um, perseverance, patience, and also supplicating to Allah SWT. So may Allah accept it, accept it from us. Amen. So there is no big problem that comes into your life. It means to, to, to take you out of this world. It's to teach you a lesson how to be patient and also to uh, teach other people how to be patient and also to benefit from them. May Allah accept this all from us. Inshallah, thank you very much, um, Sheikh Musa. Alhamdulillah, our Imam recruited you at the right time. And um, uh, <laughs> thank you. Our treasurer has confirmed that that's a good recruitment. Anyway, um, thank you so much, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. Um, we'll be here, inshallah, on time next week. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala will not be late. Because they said if the sheikhs, they are late now, they will give a fine, and the fine goes straight to the collection box. <laughs> so I said to them, uh -huh. Sheikh said, but you don't implement the only of the Sheikh. So if you are late, what do we do? Discount. <laughs> we'll do discount for you, right? <laughs> okay. Um, inshallah, the lecture, the session starts at 12 prompt. That's where we start straight away. We get in the light. Six, sorry. <laughs> Something. Is it a distress or stress? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, we start at 6 p.m. inshallah. We start straight at 6 p.m. inshallah. And now after the prayer, don't go. Get ready for our... What soup today? What soup today? Stew, yeah? Okay, get ready to eat the stew. But please don't be in your stew. Keep thinking about the stew. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Wa nashadu la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruk. Wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.